Hey guys, welcome to another video. So in this video, we'll go through exam questions specifically on how to solve algebraic expressions or fractions as exam questions. So I've taken three questions and these are from exam questions and I'm gonna walk you through how to answer these. So I should have written this actually. The first one is actually worth three marks. The second one is worth four marks and also the third one is also worth four marks. So it starts on the basic and builds it up a bit, okay? Now what, plan to do, what I'm planning to do essentially is do like a mini series of exam questions that will kind of cover more various topics so it can help you guys out because I know you guys are going through your mocks and also the exams are coming up in you know April and May. So yeah, anyway, let's get straight to the first one. So when you see, sim the first one is asking simplify, right? Now that word simplify does not mean solve and people still get this, uh, the <laughs> people still get this wrong, okay? When you say simplify, it basically means you just have an expression. When it says solve, you have to solve find a value of x. So the students I normally teach, sometimes they still get that wrong, but just remember, simplify means get an expression and solve means just solve for x, or find a value of x. So for the first one, what we can do, so I can see there's a three x plus six here, right? I can factorize that. When you see expressions like this, all you do is factorize, that's it, just factorize. So I can take three out, right? And then I have x plus two over x minus four. I can't do anything with x minus four. Now, divide means what? Divide means times, right? So if I say times and then I flip it, so x squared minus 4x goes on the top over 2x squared plus 9x plus 10. Now, this second fraction here, I have to factorize. So if we factorize the 2x squared plus 9x plus 10, now if you're not sure how to factorize this, because I'm not going to really explain everything in detail here, I'll put a link in the video that covers factorizing for equations like this. Check that out. That is very important if you're still not sure how to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two numbers here. That multiply gives me 20. So 2 times 10 is 20. And then two numbers when I add gives me 9. That's pretty simple. That's just going to be 5 and 4 or 4 and 5. doesn't matter the order. Now the 2x squared I'm going to bring here. The two numbers that I found, 5 and 4, I'm going to bring x to. I'm going to add x at the end. So it's going to be plus 4x and then plus 5x. doesn't matter. You can have 5x and 4x here. It's no big deal. And then carry the plus 10 here. Now, if you look here, 2x squared plus 4x, what's in common between that? I can take 2x out. So if I take 2x out, I'm left with x plus 2. Now, the 5x plus 10, what I can take out here is plus 5. So I'm left with x plus 2. Now, final step is I'm just going to bring this in a bracket. So that's going to be 2x plus 5. And then the other one is going to be x plus 2, right? So that is my factorized expression on for the bottom one. So if we was to rewrite this, I was going to have 3 bracket x plus 2 over x minus 4 times. Now, this x squared minus 4x here, we can factorize that as well. So if I take x out, I would be left with x minus 4, right? And if you expand that, x times x is x squared, x times minus 4 minus 4x. So x squared, so that's going to be x bracket x minus 4 over, now the 2x squared plus 9x plus 10, we've just factorized that into those two brackets, which is 2x plus 5 and x plus 2. Right, so now here comes the, let me get red here. Now here comes what you're going to do is, you know, cancel these out. So you look at diagonally and up and down. This x plus 2 can be cancelled with this x plus 2. This x minus 4 can be cancelled with this x minus 4. So now you, all you're left with is 3 times x, which is 3x, over, well, 2x plus 5. That's your answer. That's it, and that's 3 marks. So when you see expressions like this, simplify, always, always factorize, factorize, factorize. Once you factorize, you're going to see things in common, cut it out, and then you get your simplified expression. So the second one, which is four marks, now this is going to involve a bit more work. Should I use red? Uh, no, no, let me use blue. So what we're going to do here, this is algebraic fraction as well. So if you're still not sure, again, these are the topics here, but if you're not sure about algebraic fraction, I'll put the link as well in the description below or even on the top, whatever. Um, check those videos out as well. This will help. But essentially with this, what we're going to do is we need to find the lowest common multiple. So the lowest common multiple between 3x minus 2 and x plus 1 is just going to be 3x minus 2 and x plus 1. That's it, right? E equals to 2. Keep the 2. Now, we put the plus because of the plus. We're going to do something called cross multiplying. So it's going to be 8 bracket x plus 1. And then plus, we're going to cross multiply 6 bracket 3x minus 2. This is the method behind this. All I'm going to do now is expand. 8 times x is 8x. 8, 8 times 1 is 8. 6 times 3x is 18x. And then uh, 6 times minus 2 minus 12. Over. Now, we can expand the bottom bracket. So if I was to expand this, you should know how to expand this by now. But 3x times x is 3x squared. 
3x times 1 is 3x, minus 2 times x is minus 2x, 3x minus 2x is x, and then minus 2 times 1 is minus 2 equals to 2. So if we simplify the top, we're left with 8x, no, not 8x, because we did simplify that with 18, so that's going to be 26x, 8 minus 12 minus 4. And what we can do here is we can cross multiply, okay, because we need to get rid of that 3x squared plus x minus 2. So if I cross multiply everything by 2, which means I times 2 by every single term here, so it's going to be 6x squared plus 2x minus 4. Bring the 26x and minus 4 to the other side because you want to get an expression, just an expression. So I'll be left with 6x squared plus 2x minus 4 minus 26x and then the minus 4 now becomes plus 4 equals to 0. So 6x squared, uh, 2x minus 26x is minus 24x and then minus 4 plus 4 is 0, so equals to 0. So here this is actually a bit easier. You know why? Because you don't need to use quadratic formula completing the square. There is no constant number. So if you don't have any constant number, oh, this is very easy. All you do is, okay, look at what's it. It's actually kind of very similar to the x squared minus 4x in the first question where we had to see what is in common. 6x squared minus 24x, what is in common between that? 6x. So if I take 6x out, I'm left with what? Something times 6x gives me 6x squared. This is going to be x minus something times 6x gives me 24x, which is going to be 4 equals 0. So you have two solutions. 6x equals 0, so x is equals to 0. And then x minus 4 equals to 0, so x is equals to, bring the minus 4 to the other side, becomes plus 4. That's your answer. Now, if you're still not sure with algebraic fraction, go watch those other videos that I have done previously. They will very, very much help you out in solving exam questions. Because to be fair, once you understand the method, it's very easy. Once you see questions like these, these goes for four or five marks. And the, probably, the reason why this is four marks actually is because there was no quadratic uh, formula that you needed to use. That's probably most likely 99.9% .9 of the time. That's why it was a four marks. But these can go easy for five, six marks as well. If you understand the method, it's pretty easy. There's nothing that you need to really do. You just do the same method again, but you just the numbers change. That's it. Now, the other one, the third one for another four marks, you might look at this and be like, what the heck is this, man? This looks like so confusing. And actually, it's not really confusing. They're just making it to be confusing. But actually, if you're able to see what they're doing, which they're very sly about it, you're going to see how this works. So this 2x plus 1 colon ratio x plus 2 equals blah, blah, blah. That's a ratio, right? All this thing means, right? This line here, this 2x plus 1 dot dot x plus 2, you can rewrite this this way. Watch this. 2x plus 1 over x plus 2 equals now the same one for the right hand side x plus 8 comma comma that could be written as 3x minus 4. so if i've given you a question like this and i say solve i hope most of you would understand oh okay this is not that hard now right so you can see how they're wording it they're being very sly about it but if you're able to catch them out then it's very easy so when you have an expression like this straightforward you're going to just cross multiply so i'm going to have 3x minus 4 bracket times 2x plus 1 and then we do x plus 8 times x plus 2 because we have to cross multiply now if we expand this so 3x times 2x is 6x squared 3x times 1 is 3x minus 8x so that's going to be what minus 5x and then minus 4 times 1 is minus 4 if i expand this this is going to be x squared plus 10x plus 16. so if i bring x squared and 10x to the left hand side so i'm going to have 6x squared minus 5x minus 4 that's going to be minus x squared minus 10x minus 16 equals 0. So 6x squared minus x squared is 5x squared. Minus 5x minus 10x is minus 15x. And then minus 4 minus 16 is minus 20 equals to 0. So now what you have to do is you have to solve this equation. So what we can do, we can divide everything by 5 first. If I divide everything by 5, I'm left with x squared minus 3x and divide that by 5 minus 4. So you have something like this, right? 5 is outside equals to 0. Now the 5 goes on the other side, 0 divided by 5 essentially gives you 0, right? 0 divided by 5 is 0. Now we can factorize this. So if I put in bracket like this, equals to 0. So two numbers I multiply gives and put x here actually. Two numbers I multiply gives me minus 4 and two numbers when I add gives me minus 3. What would those numbers be? So that's just going to be what? Uh, minus 4 and 1. Minus 4 and 1. So once you've got those two numbers, put it here, x minus 4 and x plus 1. So if x minus 4 is equals to 0, you know x is equals to 4. If x plus 1 is equals to 0, you know x is equals to minus 1. That's it. That's your answer. So 
We've just done what? Four, eight, eleven. There's an eleven more questions here that we've just done, right? I guess when you add them all or add them all up. But it's not that hard. So once you get the method, it's pretty, pretty simple. Okay, so hopefully you guys have taken something from this and it's helped you out. If it has, thumbs up would be appreciated. And just comment down what other videos you would like on exam questions and I'll be more than happy to do it. And with that said, I'll see you guys on the next one.